Can you talk uh, a little bit about the source of inspiration for the film? Uh, where did the idea come from? Yeah, um, the film really, it, um, you know, I'm based in um, the United States and I grew up as a Muslim here in the country and um, I wanted to start by telling um, a story about Muslim Americans that um, was a little bit more nuanced than the stories that I was seeing. I think a lot of times I was seeing stories that were very political or tied to um, immigration or warfare, which are all really important subjects, but I wanted just a really deeply human story. So um, I kind of was put in contact. I came across um, one of the men who worked at a casket shop in Newark, which was not too far from where I was in New York City. And um, we started filming at the casket shop. Um, kind of starting to, maybe at first I thought I was going to tell a short film, but as I was filming at the casket shop um, and I met some of the young men um, that are in the film, I really just saw this really interesting juxtaposition of this exploration of faith, um, the rituals of death, and also a coming-of-age story and how to kind of bring all of those things together. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this process, how did you develop the plot of um, the film? Uh, what you decided to be in the film and what you and what you decided to not be in the film and um, based on what criteria? I think as we were getting into the edit process, I mean, we filmed over four years of time, so we had a lot of footage, and I think um, we had a lot of footage in the community. We had a lot of footage. Um, just in many different assets of the characters' lives. But I think what we really kept coming back to was focusing on really the characters, focusing on moments in their lives that really kind of defined them um, and really kind of defined some of the challenges they were facing and really humanized that. So I think we really wanted to kind of focus on the moments that were um, intimate, the moments that were reflective, the moments that were quiet, and I think um, being able to kind of have that focus in the edit process allowed us to know like which scenes would make it in the film and which scenes wouldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of research documents you have used to create this story? Uh, we did a lot of, a, a lot of our research for the film um, came from just being present in the community. I think you know, as you spend more time, you know, in a city like Newark, um, you know, there's a lot of different, there's a lot of rich history there. There's a lot of activism. There's a lot of um, history in terms of the Muslim community there, the religious communities. So I think spending time with community leaders, um, spending time in the community allowed us to kind of, our research was our footage. You know, we really had a lot of footage that even though it wasn't for the film, it allowed us to be more informed of you had also a tragic experience of your father and your grandfather uh, dying uh, during uh, the film project. I, I was wondering if you can say a little bit about these tragic stories and, um, and how it impacted your uh, filmmaking process. Film washing, going from filming washing to then performing a washing for my own father was really challenging i think it was very surreal but i think what it allowed me to do especially in the editorial process was um really kind of like connect with my subjects in the film in a very different way and i think in the editorial process the film became more reflective it became quieter it kind of you know the editorial process was kind of woven together and like threaded together with this understanding of what grief does what new perspective it gives you so i think I've, it's allowed me to see my film in a completely different way and it's allowed me to see um, the meaning of some of these themes in different ways having lived through the experience of grief and loss and the process of making a film about grief and loss I have a question because this is the story of an immigrant Muslims in the U.S. which is told from a uh, very subjective perspective and so it's not that you didn't look at this question from a political perspective. This is a new strategy of narration that you used. Uh, what were the difficulties and opportunities that you see in using this unique take on the subject? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, the biggest challenge, I think, anytime you're trying to do something different with filmmaking or storytelling, um, is you're, you're battling against kind of preconceived notions that people have um, that they're going to come into the viewing process with. Um, and I think for us, you know, it was about creating something that was outside of the norm. I mean, 
you know, this is a film that um, requires a lot of patience. It requires a lot of ref- uh, reflection. It requires a lot of um, vulnerability for anyone who's watching it. And I think, um, you know, a lot of times people don't have that coming into the film, but we want them to be able to wa- be affected by it and know that they're watching something that feels different, um, that feels human, that feels empathetic. Um, so it is, it's kind of like, you know, it is a kind of radical filmmaking in and of itself, but it looks very different than what we think of when we think of radical filmmaking. I mean, it's radical in its quietness, it's radical in its reflectiveness. And I think that in and of itself is kind of a, a statement that we're trying to make. We're trying to bring a different type of narrative to the table. Um, and hopefully, you know, films like this will hopefully push the envelope or push the expectation of what we think of when we think of a Muslim American film. Why you decided to shoot the film in black and white? Yeah, that was always, you know, it, it's interesting because the film was always meant to be in black and white. There was never a version of the film that was in color. And I think it was because, you know, we're, it, it, there's two main reasons. I think the first reason is um, we're kind of walking this fine line between exploring grief, um, exploring these rituals of death and spirituality, these kind of bigger themes. Um, and we're also kind of exploring these kind of coming of age narratives. So what the black and white does is tonally, it allows you to kind of walk the line between the ways in which those two spaces are completely interconnected with one another. And the other thing that's really important is when you take away color, you're, you're meant to just focus on the kind of textural details of what's in front of you. So if you're seeing a body washing on the screen, if you're seeing the kind of, you know, the sawdust from a casket being built in a casket shop, you know, rain falling on the window, those textural details take on these, you know, profound sort of meanings in ways that they wouldn't in color. They, you know, it allows us to kind of project some of these themes of faith, redemption, loss, into those small textual details of the world. And it hopefully enhances that sort of intimate viewing experience that was so important to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, how many days the shooting take place? And was there anything unpredictable that happened during this period? Well, so we shot over the course of, you know, it was about two to three years of continuous filming um, that we filmed, um, which is why you obviously see, like, the young boys grow up um, over the film. So we had quite a bit of... Production was limited to um, one defined period of time, necessarily. Um, We really wanted to kind of, because we were telling such a human story through, um, you know, through verite, you know, through a way of, kind of observational cinema, I think we really wanted to kind of capture as much footage as we could. Um, and then, um, but we did film a little bit through the editorial process too. So I think ultimately we, we ended up coming to around like three or four years worth of footage um, mm-hmm. that we captured. This is your first feature film. How did you manage to secure the fund? Uh, was it easy? Uh, what process you take to secure the fund? I mean, it was very difficult at first. I think, you know, anytime you're a first-time filmmaker, um, especially in the documentary space, it's very, it's very challenging. Um, and I think we were lucky that we were able to get a couple of early funds um, from some funders in the um, state. So some of our early funders were, um, you know, Tribeca Film Institute, um, and actually Hot Docs um, has a fund the cross currents fund and we were that was kind of earlier in our production process that we had a footage sample you know we had all of these themes that we wanted to explore that funders really what resonated with and i think then once you get that institutional support um, as a first-time filmmaker it's so important because it allows other funders to see that um you know you're 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 able to tell a story or you're able to kind of communicate your ideas in a clear sort of way. Um, and the main funder that we ended up having in the States was ITVS um, and that they're a broadcaster. So I think we, that's when, when we got ITVS funding. I think it was really important because one, it was, you know, the larger piece of our funding, but also um, it allowed us to really have distribution tied to it, which allowed us to kind of approach you know, festivals and just other distributors and kind of navigating the editorial process a lot easier once you have the support of um, not only a funder, but a broadcaster and distributor. Mm -hmm. Uh, How was the experience of working with Hanif, uh, Forkan and uh, Naz? And how did you get uh, your money or manage to gain uh, their trust? It was amazing working with them. And I think, you know, you always hear about it. You know, this is my first 
film that I've made, my first feature, and you know, you always hear that you get really close with your subjects, but I think, you know, you're, you're spending so much time with these people, you know, they became like my family, you know, Hanif in particular, I think, we, you know, I, you know, I've spent so much time with him over the years, and, you know, we've bonded in so many different ways. I mean, I think Hanif in particular, like, you know, Hanif taught me how to do a washing so that I was able to wash my father. It's a bond that I'm, I'm never going to forget, not only because of the film, but just because of the human connection that we have together. You know, he helped me kind of navigate my grief, and, you know, we really relied on each other um, during that period of time. So we got really close. And to gain the trust, I think it was just, um, you know, I, I was very truthful and honest with what we wanted to tell, but I was also work collaborating with them the whole way. I think the trust comes from friendship. The, co- the trust comes from almost like becoming my brothers, you know, and mm. at the end of the day, like, we filmed, but we also were friends the whole time, and we're still friends, and I think that trust is really what allowed somebody um, to, to, you know, to, to give you that space to be able to film, and I think it also really helped, too, with Furquan and Nas that, we were just always present. You know, we were there for the good times. We were there for the bad times. We were there not only, we weren't always filming. I think it was important to to not show that, you know, we weren't just there to make a movie. You know, we were there because we cared about them. The movie just happened to be a documentation of this period of their lives. But at the end of the day, we told them, you know, and I think especially because we weren't, we were first-time filmmakers, and we had it. We didn't have expectations of where this film would go. Um, we made it clear that at the end of the day, even if this film went nowhere, and even if this film wasn't done, you know, we'd still be here. Even if the cameras weren't rolling, we would still be there for them. And I think that trust was really important um, for both of us. And so I think allowing that process really created the bond. And I think the style of filmmaking that you see, the intimacy, the verite that you see, um, is a reflection, hopefully, of the um, kind of closeness that we had with our subjects throughout the process. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you worked with your brother on this film. Do you have anything specific to say about this uh, family relationship and working experience? Yeah, it's very, it's very interesting. I mean, I never thought that I would, uh, you know, growing up, I never expected to, you know, be making films with my brother um, where I am now. But I think what's really interesting about the documentary process too, um, you know, you have because you have to be observational. You know, my brother and I know each other so well, there's trust there. But I think because we became so close with our subjects, we, we did kind of make this little family. You know, like Hanif, she calls us his brother. We call him our brother. You know, I think there's this really there's this bond, and it kind of really shows in the way that we were there every time filming. And I think um, it was also helpful too because. Sometimes when you're filming like a verite style film, you know, there's not really, you don't want to be talking on set. You don't want to be interrupting subjects. But, you know, when my brother and I were there together, you know, we're so close that we can almost communicate with one another just by looking at each other. We don't need words. You know, we really understand um, the process and there's safety there too. I think there's trust of, you know, I didn't have to have all the answers as the director sometimes. I didn't have to have it all figured out. Um, and same for him. This was the first feature film that he produced. And so we were able to kind of teach each other and grow together. That was very natural for us because we've been doing that our whole lives, you know, mm-hmm. figuring things out, navigating these processes together. Yeah. And uh, in terms of the relationship with your cinematographer or director of photography, uh, how was that experience? Uh, uh, are you very into calculating everything beforehand? What was uh, the rule of improvisation? I'm also wondering in the film. Well, I I shot most of the film, so the relationship was mostly with myself. But we did shoot a little bit with a cinematographer, um, this amazing cinematographer based in New York that I had met, um, and we brought him in to kind of shoot some. Interestingly, like once we got the film in a really good spot. Um, and we had most of the Verite film, there's some moments in the film that are really, I want to say, like, a little bit more um, stylized in some sort of way. Like, we have textural details of hands running along the water to kind of represent, you know, the body washing process and some, you know, really intimate sort of details that I was able to collaborate with um, this amazing cinematographer, Amir. Um, and um, Amir feels Amy, who's... Um, who was the cinematographer that I collaborated with, and we always shot with Hanif, you know, so we was bringing, that was also a strange process because I was the only one that was filming, you know, it was just me and Hanif 
for three years at that point and bringing somebody else into those spaces, into the casket shop, you know, into the, um, the mosque where we would pray. Um, it was really interesting, but I think what was really helpful for Amir was that um, he could see how close I was with the subjects and it allowed him to feel comfortable to kind of step into those environments and film a little bit. Um, and we did have to plan a little bit beforehand because, because I was filming so much um, I kind of took certain things for granted. Like, there was one moment where we were filming a casket build. And because I had filmed so many casket builds, I knew exactly how to move around that small room mm. with Hanif in a way that was kind of second nature to me. And it was funny because Amir didn't know when Hanif would be moving left or right or when he'd be lifting his saw and when the saw does would fall along the camera. And so it was interesting because I realized um, just how much I needed to kind of communicate. So it was about taking a step back and kind of telling him, okay, this is the steps of the casting building process. So this is what's going to happen here. And then this is what's going to happen um, at this moment. So just understanding like when certain things were happening to kind of like understand how you move within the spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, the film was supposed to release in theaters, but with coronavirus, your plan surely has been changed. How do you feel about this and, um, and, uh, also, how do you think that virtual uh, theaters can help you in uh, promoting or distributing the films and its messages? Yeah, I mean, definitely, it's, it's been a it's been a challenging process to navigate, seeing you know how distribution is going to look. I mean, we're thankful that you know certain festivals like Hot Docs that we were participating in, um, you know, are going virtual, so there's still a way to show the film to audiences. I think what's made it really easy is that we do have a U.S. broadcaster, so we're broadcasting a film in the States um, in the spring of 2021. So I think between now and then, we're definitely trying to find other ways of distribution. Um, some theatrical distributors are trying to do um, in-person screenings later this year, but um, I don't know, we're in New York City right now, and uh, it seems unlikely that in-person gatherings are going to happen um, in the same sort of way anytime this year. So we're trying to see like how virtual showcases work, and I think Hot Docs is a really great opportunity for us to be able to see what a virtual showcase of the film feels like and see what sort of response we can get. And then hopefully, based on those learnings, we can hopefully continue to do that in other opportunities that come up throughout the year.